Hey everybody, looks like we are live. I am going to double check here, get to the right screen. Let's see. So everybody, how you doing? Happy Wednesday. Looks like we made it to yet another week. So cool. I hope you everyone is uh, had a great Thanksgiving in the States. And uh, let's see. So we have Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Hi, Mike. How you doing? We have Roy at Color Graphics, John Diekman. We have uh, Mr. Willie, how are you, sir? And we have Patty, great to see you, Patty. So, uh, so everything is good. Hey, what's up, Mr. Todd, how you doing? Colette, how are you doing? We have Blue and Paul, good to see you, Paul. So we have a nice group today so far, uh, right off the bat, which is really very cool. Thank you everybody for coming. Part seven, wow. I think there might be eight or nine parts to this painting because it's so small and so detailed. Although things are ramping up, you're gonna see things really move quickly in the next couple of uh, sessions. So it's uh, really cool. So. So how's the how's the uh, sound sound check everybody, and how is the picture? Pretty good. I have a fan going, so that means that there might be a little bit of a fan noise. But let me know if it's uh, you know too much. That would be great. Thank you so much, Willie. I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much, and it's always great to. Uh, have Mike here. Mike, thank you so much. Everyone hit that like button as Mike has so kindly said. I appreciate that. So here we are. We are at week seven. So the first order of business is basically, let me make me smaller. That should be the first order of business. And um, let's see. We are going to... Hey, Nameless, how you doing? Good to see you. How are you, sir? So glad you made it. And let's see who else we have. I think everyone is here so far. So, okay, so we want to always do the two airbrush method. Of course, there are times people who don't have two airbrushes, of course, you're not gonna be able to do it. That's cool. But a two airbrush method at this point, you can basically go back and forth and not have to, let's say, do something in the light mixture where you should have done it in the medium mixture. So, hey, what's up, Tom? Good to see you. So that's why we have to have the two because we can get lazy and say, you know what, I can do whatever I was doing in the uh, medium mixture. I can do it in the light mixture and vice versa. Not the saying you can't do it. However, basically, what's happening is is that you're compensating and you don't want to do that. You want to use the right ink for the job. Hey, what's up there, Mr. Leahy? How you doing today, sir? Great to see you. So, I believe my airbrush is fired up. We'll see. So, one airbrush, I'm going to go ahead and load the light mixture. And then that's going to be the Extreme Patriot, the customized extreme patriot arrow there's a beautiful beautiful piece of equipment there and then i'm going to get the other hose Oi. Ah, okay hose number two that is going to be for the extreme patriot 105 my customized version and if you ever want to see the difference between the customized version <coughs> of the arrow and the 105 is that the 105 has the large cup, same great needle nozzle combination, same great back, same great trigger. So everything same, it's really cool. All right, so here we go. So now I'm gonna get the light mixture. Here we go. I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna think I'm gonna put the light mixture in the arrow. That's what I'm gonna do. Give you different viewpoint here. There we go. And we'll 
put the top on here. Top is always important. Always put that top on, you know, very, very important. And let's see here. Um, okay, so here we have the Customized Extreme Patriot 105 with the large cup, and we're going to put Mr. Medium Mixture in there. And this is interesting, one of my throwback bottles from the olden days. Dun, dun, dun. See that? That's from the olden days. I'm going to put some of that medium mixture in there, like so. Oh, blue, that's a good question. I never, ever fill the cup. If we look at this one right here, if I change the, I don't know if you can see it, but I really put hardly any, maybe just a fifth of a cup. I ne unless I'm doing backgrounds. Hey, Mr. Leahy, thank you so much for that. Mr. Leahy with the super chat. Thank you, sir. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much. And so about a fifth, unless I'm doing a big background, then I'm, I'll never fill it more than two thirds because I never want to, because you know, I'm pretty, I move around a lot, you know, so I never want it to spill. So I can always refill, but once it spills, it's just really a mess to clean up, you know? So uh, we don't want to do that. So that's very cool. Thank you so much, Mr. Steve. So I have the medium and the light mixture. So now comes pretty much a little bit of, how do we say, it gets a little bit uh, real up in here because now we're going to start working on um, the hair, making things a lot more, making things a lot more detailed, uh, worrying about edges more, stuff like that. So let's go into the hair and let's work out the hair a little bit. Of course, I have my PSI set at 25, set it and forget it. Any adjustments to be made are made with my Extreme Patriot Arrow and the 105 with the customized pack valve. Don't leave home without it. Um, most of my people who purchase the airbrush, they really, I'm, and I'm not saying this, this is coming, I'm gonna actually start putting this on my website, testimonials of a good percentage of those who purchase this airbrush that it's their new favorite airbrush and they were a lot of people through and through so that's exciting it really makes me feel good that I'm able to uh, produce something hey Andre come on Michael say how are you all the way from Brazil Viva Brazil so good to see you my friend Andre is a really amazing uh, airbrush artist I'm sure uh, many of you know who he is. Just a fantastic painter and just a nice guy. And one second rule is always in effect, everybody. Oh, thank you, Patty. That's so great. Patty says great price and customer support. That makes me feel good. Thank you. Best advertisement is a happy customer, I always say. And so I appreciate that so much. And so, as you can see, just working on the hair, moving around. It's important to move around, even in this stage. Well, you figure the first couple of minutes is just me getting reacclimated with the painting. Even though I've already been airbrushing for about four hours today. And uh, Oh, and Ingla says each one needs to be done twice. So a total of six portraits. Now, what is that then? Uh, so uh, let me see. Steven, any advice for speeding through a project? Three different portraits done in a week before Christmas. Yeah, so very interesting. So congratulations. I hope you're getting a pretty penny for for that uh, 
that commission because, you know, that's really wild. Congrats. So the main, main thing that we always want to make sure that we have is plenty of focus. Focus is something that it's not hard. Focus is something you don't have to study for. Uh, it has nothing to do with talent. So definitely, definitely concentrate on getting good focus. And that's really going to help you. Especially like detail areas such as what I'm working on now. There we go. And it's interesting because focus has a lot to do with kind of shutting out the world, I find. When I'm able to do that, it usually works very good. Hey Phil, how you doing? Good to see you. Great. So great you're here. Thank you so much for coming by on this Wednesday. Uh, I, you did a really wonderful piece of artwork, Phil. I loved it. I thought it was great. Great job. I'm just going to continue down here. I'm not thinking about finishing or getting any kind of uh, pressure to finish. My only thing is just to make this look beautiful. That's all I'm looking at. That's all I'm caring about. Well, I'll tell you about the, so, um, doing a video, good question, uh, Mr. Mr. Nameless. So thanks so much for this question, because I wanted to talk about this. So I did the Wheel of Names, and it was great, and everyone won, and I have all the names, and I actually made the products. It's just, uh, I've been making a video. I have been uh, working really hard on my my classes and the live streams takes preparation so i overextended myself with the people who won and i am going to get them to you hopefully this week but before i have any more wheels of names and stuff and contests which are a lot of fun i want to make sure i get out the product for those who have already won so that kind of rhymes you know but yes that's very important to me. I don't want to continue getting underwhelmed or overwhelmed. So I really want to get them out to you, and then we'll begin again. Because they were fun, weren't they? So that's really cool. And so don't worry, Nameless. We'll, we'll bring that back. Okay, sir? And uh, Philip says, uh, thank you, Tim. Happy to be here. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And yes, how are you feeling, Wendy? How's everything? Okay, so let's go back and just sort of, now very interesting the way that her hair, Jody's hair, interacts with the background. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Hey, this is a good time for Blackbeard Wheat to make an appearance. See that? Get some organic shapes. Just a like a so. No, nothing too crazy. Just a few organic shapes. Maybe this might be a job for medium mixture. Let's see if we can do that. 
Hey, what's up there, Mr. Brad? Good to see you. So glad you're here, sir. Just to get some organic shapes here and there. Spread them out a little bit. There we go. Let's do the same on, on this side, just a little bit of this black beard wheat. Hard to see, but they are there. There we go. And let's put a couple over here. So Roy asked me where to get them in our class this week. And I would say definitely if you get lucky at a Hobby Lobby or something like that, that would be your best, best bet. Once again, this is a medium mixture. And I'm getting some of that, you know. So, Mr. Steve, how is your uh, sale going? Is the Black Friday sale still in effect, Mr. Steve? Yes, speeding up is very rarely a good thing. Actually, I don't think it's a good thing in any way. Unless that's the speed you work at. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so I gotta remember I'm in the medium mixture here. So, we're in the medium mixture. Let's go ahead and start working on some of the the uh, the center line with the medium mixture I think that's going to be brave I think it's going to be good so let's once again come into the eyes there we go whoa okay Okay, so Steve is continuing his uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, uh, Happy Easter. Uh, so, <laughs> so Steve, what is the code that if someone goes on your website, they can get that incredible deal? Something like 40% off. Is that true? 40% off? That's unbelievable, sir. So, I know I don't... Uh, no sound? Oh, okay. Holiday 21, 40% off. That's fantastic. So, uh, Roy says there's no sound. Can everyone else hear me? That is an unbelievable price. And is that StephenLahey.com or SteveLahey.com? Okay, cool. Roy, I think it's on your end that you can't hear me. So it's always important when someone says they can't hear me that I make sure it's not me. But uh, you should be able to fix that, Roy, uh, pretty pretty quickly. Uh, so is it StephenLahey.com or is it Stevelahey.com? And that's prices on his prints and on his original artwork. And uh, I think you said, thank you, Phil, and, and thank you, Steve and Blue, and Colette and Willie and John for that, and Patty. Um, now, is that on your prints, or is that just on your, um, on your fine art pieces? And I remember you saying it's like they're getting, they're getting like a gallery commission on you with that, which is fantastic. So, definitely... That's definitely a, not a, I wouldn't say a steal, I would say a great value. So definitely check that out if you're looking to get a really amazing gift for, uh, you know, an art lover in your life or maybe even a little Christmas gift for yourself. So definitely a uh, win-win situation. You help someone out like Steve, who is giving a lot back and giving wonderful free con content every every Monday night at 6 on um, 
on his Facebook channel. So you're you're helping out uh, you're helping out great art that is uh, at no cost to you. And he's able to continue this, and just it's just so cool. So definitely, what is really cool uh, to do that, Mr. Nigel? How are you? Yes, this is live. Definitely, sir. Good to see you. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, Nigel is a great artist from the UK, doing some incredible stuff. Um, very interesting. He's very knowledgeable in uh, in uh, art history, especially the Pre-Raphaelites, which is like a love of mine. So very cool. So I'm ex always excited to see Nigel here. Okay, so I worked on the eyes, darkened them up nicely, and let's go ahead and let's work on the nostrils. But you know what? Mm -hmm. I am going to be using the light mixture on the nostrils they could go bad <laughs> we don't want that <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, let's see if i can focus i gotta focus my mind and also focus the camera there we go and let's let's get ready to rumble shall we okay There we go. Nostril number one in the books. Okay, spidering. How do you how do you combat that spidering? Well, you just want to make sure you lower your air pressure and you don't stay in the same area, right? So you move around, which is very important. Oh, Paul says you better go see if the Notre Dame one is still in. Yeah, I heard great things about that one. Yes. Definitely, Paul. Uh, so, Steve, is the Notre Dame one still available? And I'm going to come in and do that really beautiful cast shadow of the septum of the nose. There we go. Very cool, very cool. Yes, Mr. Nigel lives in England, so cool. Let's see here. And could we darken the cast shadow of the wing of this nostril here? Yes, we can. Once again, I'm using the light mixture in the Extreme Patriot Arrow customized version. See this bad boy? Such a beautiful piece of equipment. $149, and it does everything. And between you and me, a little better than the Custom Micron. Hey, Paul, thank you, sir. Paul with the Super Chat. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate that, my friend. That helps so much, and uh, and I really appreciate the work that you're doing. Paul has shown me some of the painting he's doing with the inks, and I'm really loving it. So fantastic. So I really, really, really thank you for that. And so we have Mr. Rick in the house. How are you, Rick? And uh, thank you. Rick says uh, Miss Coma is looking very stellar, and I greatly appreciate that. And uh, let's see here. We have a little bit of a cast shadow going on right here with this wing of the nostril. Let's make that happen. Okay, remember center line, right? When I was in uh, karate, and we were always taught if we we're gonna strike somebody, we're gonna strike them along the center line of the body, come the, all the way from from the tip of their forehead all the way down to the groin. If you hit somebody in the center line of the body, that's where all the energy is, all the strength. And the same thing, I took a lot of the philosophy that came from martial arts and Eastern thinking, I apply that to my painting. So 
if you concentrate your work, let's say on the center line of her, you'll see it's the most important, right? So if you basically concentrate that and then move out from there, I think it would be very beneficial. And me personally, I find that it is, uh, it helps the work to be very powerful and gives me a focus on what to concentrate on and then move out. So give that a try. Try think doing that, you know, the center line of the body and, you know, starting with the uh, eyes, of course. I think that will really benefit you. So give it a shot. Ah, uh, no, Paul, it's always a question. Always, always a pleasure to answer your questions. I might not be able to get back to you right away. You're also cool understanding. Uh, it's just I'm wearing so many hats. So many hats, I don't have a hat today. You know, um, I'm making a seven hour how to video from the beginning all the way to the end. And I'm doing that, working hard to get that. I already filmed it. It's now just editing it and getting that together. And you know, when I think of this video, this is not a sales pitch in any way, but when I think of this video, I really feel I wish I had this when I started airbrushing because there's so much information of all the trials and errors and all the information that I've gotten from all my years of studying art and doing art independently. I really feel that this is seven hours of just little golden nuggets that I think, you know, is going to be really great for airbrush artists at every level. So um, I'm very excited about it. So I've been working hard on that, trying to get packages out and making inks and you know, I need, I need like, uh, I need employees, but I can't afford myself. <laughs> my employee's my cat, but she doesn't do much but scratch me, as you can see right over here. She got me the other day, but that's it, you know. It, and uh, Paul says, it says four ninety nine nine ninety nine nineteen ninety nine 99 nameless, I swear. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it sounds funny. Uh, nameless, subs oh, Willie says, I've been waiting a long time for this. Ah, oh, thank you, Willie. I'm telling you, Willie, this is going to be something that I'm excited about, and I know it's going to help you, because not everyone can take the classes. Willie works very hard. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, he needs to just catch up on sleep. And I definitely appreciate that. And Nameless says, Tim, never would have figured you would have Kung Fu type. And yes, I know that's the same as karate. I took a few Taekwondo. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, I studied for quite a uh, quite number of years. Uh, and uh, I studied Kempo Karate and uh, uh little Okinaw Okinawan uh, karate as well, a uh, little bit of Tai Chi, but a lot of pressure points and, you know, what I studied was a lot of uh, hand movements, which is really good because being an artist, I have a lot of hand-eye coordinations, pressure points, stuff like that. So, yeah, so I, I had a great sensei. I had two senseis. Uh, one, he, he was fantastic, and then I had a second one who was a Navy SEAL who was stationed over in Okinawa and studied with, a, with a, a master over there. So I was very fortunate. That was in the 90s. So that was really cool. But I'm so glad you uh, studied Taekwondo. It's a great art. I love how Ta I couldn't do Taekwondo because I'm not flexible in the legs. And, you know, you need to do those kicks. So Kempo was, was very conducive to me. So it's very, the kicks are only, you know, waist down and then a lot of hands, hand movements and, and uh, pressure points. So, so yeah, so that was better for me. In Taekwondo, like painting, you want to find something that is always, uh, you want to find something that is uh, always conducive to what you can do, right? So Taekwondo would not be good for me because of my lack of uh, stretch that I had. Same thing with painting, you know. Sculptor is not good for people who, you know, uh, you know, don't have strong hands or see things in that way. And, oh, so Omas, how you doing? So, 
Oh, listen to this. Thank you. So Omar said, hey, Tim, this seven-part tutorial really made a difference for him, especially presenting the sketchbook was so helpful, and I have one, too, now with already four paintings in it. Wow. So, Omar, thank you so much for sharing with me. This is why I do it. You know, I have several reasons why, but what a great thing is that you know, little old me could be doing these live streams, and, you know, I enjoy it so much, but to affect, uh, to affect somebody positively, that just really just stokes the fires, the fans, the flame of the passion of teaching. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That means so much to me, Omas. You really made my week. So thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, Stephen uh, Leahy says he studied general shows karate. Oh, that's the, the, you know, that stuff's really good. General shows chicken. My weakness is garlic chicken mild. Unbelievable. I haven't had Chinese food because you know what? With the pandemic, I blew up to 198 pounds. It's been about a month now and I cut out bread I cut out white rice, and sadly, I cut out sugary drinks. So that brings me to this part of our demonstration. I'm going to show you my new love. So I'm back to water. Wah, wah, wah. Right? Not exactly exciting. Kind of sad. Right? That's not good. Who wants to drink water? Not Tim. But Colette told me about this, and I appreciate that, Colette. Thumbs up to Colette. This stuff, I got it from Aldi's. It's a uh, raspberry lemonade, fit and active drink mix. And it's perfect, it's four to 16 ounce bottles that you get at Aldi's. Let me open this up. And then you put this bad boy, you open it, and you just put this in here. And I'm really saying this because, I'm really showing this because this was a game changer for me. Look at this. So this is really fantastic. I don't know if they show. Oh, it's on the box, but it's only five calories, everybody. Five calories and a 16.9. And I hate all these diet drinks with their nasty aftertaste. So here's the trick. You mix it really well. This one is raspberry lemonade. You mix it really well. And then once you mix it really well, make sure you don't mix it over your artwork. That would be bad. Become a watercolor. So um, you mix it really, really well. It might be little crystals here. You just want to get rid of them. So no floaties. You don't want to drink floaties. And then five calories. And it's not bad, honestly. So the trick is really cold. Raspberry lemonade is really good. But I highly, highly recommend the iced tea. Five calories. So I already lost seven pounds, and Mike says he hasn't seen 120, 198 pounds in 20 years. You're probably a big tough guy. I'm a little, I'm a little artist. So 198 on me is like here I come, you know. So uh, it's very good that I lost that seven pounds and down to 191, and I'm gonna fight and push and and kick and scratch and really work hard until I get back down to 178. So that's my goal. So you're on my fitness journey and uh, you know, you're gonna get frustrated. If you see me with a big sandwich, intervene, okay? We'll have the first live stream, live stream intervention. So, okay, look at this. Hey Raul, how you doing? Great to see you. So glad you're here. Yes, Willie, give it a try. Give the iced tea one a try first, because that just blew my mind how good that was. So that's good. Blue says she drinks the Mio Squeeze. I tried this over here. It's similar with uh, Fit and Active, uh, but it does have a pretty big aftertaste. This has zero calories. I guess the five calories in this one is a little extra flavor. So I can deal with fly. Oh, thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. He's going to cheer me on. We need that. Uh, definitely. So, you know, 
uh, you know, the, it affects us and, you know, this whole lockdown and everything affects us all in different ways, you know? And uh, so, uh, yeah, so that really affected me. I was in shape. I used to be a gym rat and now I can't go to the gym. So basically gives me an excuse not to go, which is not cool. And as you see, I'm just going to come in with the medium mix, the light mixture. And I'm just going to work on the shadow of her teeth. Now, if ever I feel like it's not coming out, there's two things. I might have a little bit of a tip dry, or I might just be tentative, right? We don't know. So I'm just going to come over here and test out. So now I'm feeling good and I'm getting the value that I want. So whenever you're pulling back and nothing's happening quite as fast as you want, stop and figure out what it is. Are you being sensitive? Is there a little clog in your airbrush? Uh, you have tip dry. So that's really going to help, you know? It'll kind of circumvent you having any kind of like disastrous issues, especially in the late going like this. So remember, set it and forget it. 25 PSI. And uh, if you don't have a Mac valve, get one. Even better, get yourself an Extreme Patriot Arrow, the customized version with the pack valve. It does the trick so nice. Interesting. So Nigel said, this is a good point. Nigel said, um, uh, he thinks that an artist has to be a Renaissance man. What do you guys feel about that? You know, like, uh, you mean like a Renaissance man as scientist and, and musician or mathematician sort of have a more well-rounded kind of liberal arts kind of approach? Or is it, uh, you know, basically... Uh, having to do with, let's say, uh, a Renaissance man uh, or a Renaissance artist uh, having to do within their own genre. Very good point. So, love to hear everyone's thought about that. I really feel that, you know, having other pursuits really helps. Like, I love geometry. And sometimes, just like today, I was able to explain something by using geometry. And so, yes, I think it's uh, beneficial for an artist to be well-versed in, in other, other, other areas. I think that's very important. So, yes, I agree. I agree. So, how many out there are out there are musicians as well as, let's say, as an artist? Are you a musician as well? Uh, do you work on cars? Do you do other things in a, a very artistic way? That would be cool. And so I agree. So Paul says, Steve, your Mustang canopy is on point, but the tarp is amazing work. Everyone in here is wow. Hopefully after a year or 10, he'll be there. No, you're, you're doing really well. And uh, you just... You just enjoy the process there, Paul. You're, you're doing great. And, you know, you're further along than you think you are. So, kudos to you, sir. You're doing great. And so, as you can see, I'm doing okay with the mouth. But going any further with the lips, we know that's a job for the detail mixture. So, we're going to hold off of that until the end. And uh, so, Nameless says, what does... What this defines a Renaissance man? Well, a Renaissance man or a Renaissance person is someone who would be the archetype of, let's say, Leonardo da Vinci, who was an archaeologist, a geologist. He was a biologist. He was an artist. He was a sculptor. He did everything. And so that basically, I would say, is the, uh, the Reader's Digest version of the definition of a... Uh, of a Renaissance man or artist or woman. And uh, so John says, uh, Blue says uh, she feels the same way. And, uh, and 
John Deacon says he plays the saxophone and played the saxophone in stool in school. Tinker with the banjo. Look at that, like Steve Martin. And not serious about it, however. And Omar says, architect, geometry is my passion. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, architecture is amazing. And I can really see how, how geometry and art is really close together. Oh, okay, an artist who creates in many different genres. Okay, definitely. So that would mean, uh, you know, sculpture, uh, music, that sort of thing. Okay, very cool, Nigel. Definitely. Nameless says, Tim, what kind of tea are you drinking today? I'm drinking green tea with ginseng and honey. That sounds really good. I'm going to have to do that after the live stream because I have to edit uh, my video. So I finished filming the video, which is very exciting. So I'm happy about that. Uh, so now I'm into the first hour. It's going to be seven hours of commercial free rock and roll. No, seven hours of... of Un, un, et, no, I wouldn't say um, uh, just seven hours of really incredible information, just having fun and working on a really great painting together. And uh, so, so Nameless is a big fan of Mr. Da Vinci. So I'm going to be sticking with Crystal Light because I like putting sugar in my green tea, so I'm kind of uh, moving away from it, you know? And it's not easy. It's not easy, but we'll get there. Mike says he's going to disagree with the idea that one has to be a Renaissance man. There's plenty of people who work in art, and that's done, and they don't have to qualify. I understand. That's a good point of view, too. Some people like to focus right and just uh you know streamline so i think it's great that all of our uh, all our minds work differently which is really fantastic yeah so i turned into a rock dj <laughs> yeah so tonight we're going to have two hours of commercial free airbrushing and uh coming up is uh led zeppelin and we're going to do some uh, uh, I remember the DJs used to do the two for Tuesdays, remember? So they do two Led Zeppelins, two of the Who, two of, let's say, you know, 38 Special, those kinds of things. That was a lot of fun. Oh, so people who were contract illustrators, yes, so they pretty much do one thing and concentrate on that. I can see that. Very cool. And Nameless says, so he would have to say Renaissance, uh, Renaissance. Uh, his OCD would drive him nuts if he didn't branch out into other works. I can definitely see that, you know. A lot of people have a hard time just like focusing on one thing. And I think that's the way Mr. Da Vinci was. He did so many little paint, so many, such a small number of paintings. And I think that kind of, uh, that kind of came back to bite him. But, you know, he actually did come close to inventing a helicopter and a tank. I mean, he's all like centuries before they were ever invented. So I just think that is so wild. So right now I'm kind of all over the place, but that's okay because I'm, I'm just getting a feeling for everything. So, you know, there is a good... There's something good about, you know, branching out and just freeing your mind because, uh, and I think I agree a little bit with Nigel as well, a little bit with uh, Nameless um, and, and Mr. Mike. The two sides, right, to the same story. So to play, let's say, devil's advocate for both sides, focusing on one thing, that whole saying that you can't serve two masters, you're going to love the other or hate the other. So... To concentrate even on one medium at a time like airbrush and or black and white airbrush as opposed to color or pastel even that is to have that focus it kind of helps you to have a much quicker pragmatic growth however the other side of the coin the other side of the coin is if I'm studying physics 
and let's say I'm studying about dimensions and here's an example so I was studying physics not too long ago about dimensions and then we have one dimension so one dimension is this piece of paper right you see it's just you know you just see like one dimension on this paper here see that we just see one dimension it goes from left to right and then all of a sudden we turn it over and we have two dimensions so that means you can move this way that way diagonal so that's two dimensions length and width however when you have something like this then all of a sudden you have length and width and then you have depth and that's three dimensions so what we do as painters and this is kind of a little bit of a weird epiphany so bear with me everybody um, we in essence are taking something that is of two dimensions and we're giving the illusion of three dimensions so we're taking something that only has two dimensions and we're bending it to appear to have three dimensions that is very exciting and one of the things that really kind of struck me is to really do something that is going to bend a two-dimensional surface to really appear to be three dimensions we would have to optimally to be able to walk around the model right so in the future when I photograph a model I am going to do a video where I am going to walk around her and take photos of all different angles so not only when I'm painting let's say I'm painting her face or her hair I want to really envision what's going on behind her same thing with the shoulder I want to envision the shoulder turning all the way to the back of her let's say her scapula I think and also think about the small of her back when I'm when I'm painting let's say her chest area those are things that by envisioning that by actually thinking about that in three dimensions I feel that we can take our paintings and have a much better form of a three-dimensional three-dimensional image on a three-dimensional surface well mr. Mike have a great night I hope you uh, I hope you have a great weekend coming up and I really appreciate you spending your Wednesday and uh, I hope you get a great night's sleep and you feel refreshed tomorrow and uh, let's see what I missed here uh, Mike says there's good anecdotal evidence that da Vinci was the poster child of ADHD <laughs> that's pretty funny uh, I think that's funny Nigel says he's an insomniac retired commercial digital artist so plenty of time to be creative but always exhausted the exhausting part that's tough but the creative part that's good so I'm glad you have time for that Omar says learning perspective is key to understanding the real world the principle of renaissance I love that yes thank you Omas. and Nigel says Tim he really admires my work and he does not normally subscribe to artist feeds but in my case he made the accept thank you that means so much to me and I really appreciate that Nigel um, you know I admire your work as well I think you're you're a fantastic artist and uh, you know uh, means a lot to me I just want you to know that thank you so much and so everyone's work here just fantastic I really enjoy everyone's work and everyone's feedback you're always inspiring me to push push my work to the next level and so that means that means the world to me definitely okay so now we have the chin so let's take a look at her chin very interesting I love her chin uh, it's very three-dimensional very round and cute so I'm gonna have the light mixture and I'm going to have a good distance maybe four inches and you see I'm just going to start darkening where that roundness of the chin starts turning in both different directions right so the lighting if we look at her cast shadow on her nose you always want to assess this this is sort of like when a golfer is going to drive the ball he's going to check the wind we as artists when we're painting we want to check the cast shadow and the cast shadow is going to tell us 
where that light source is coming from. So if we have the nose here, you can see the cast shadow is coming straight down and it's in front of her, of course, so it's above her and in front. And when we think of that, then it's not such a mystery as to how to make things turn because we're understanding what parts of her face and hands and legs are directly facing the light. And so when it turns away from the light, it's gonna fall into shadow. So that really helps. So it's, uh, it is, it's uh, part scientist, part artist, part abstract expressionist, part realist, part photorealism. You know, you want to learn from everybody. You want to learn from the abstract expressionist. There's a lot to learn from Jackson Pollock. There's a lot to learn from Mr. Mr. Mark Rothko. Uh, you know, how they can take uh, things and sort of make it work within two-dimensional forms and we can actually put those some of those elements in there. Uh, Willie has to get some sleep. Oh, have a great night, Willie. I hope you uh, get great rest for tomorrow. Don't work too hard, okay? Too bad it's not Thanksgiving tomorrow. It's good to have Thursdays off, off right? That would have been good if it was a weekly thing. <laughs> so, Willie, I appreciate you. Thank you for hanging out here on your Wednesday night. And uh, it means a lot to me. And I, I hope to uh, hear from you soon. I will let you know when that video is out. I'm thinking next week, and I got some really great surprises for it uh, that I think everyone's going to love, you know, so I'm um, looking forward to sharing that with everybody, but I don't want to share it prematurely. I want to make sure I pull this off before I share it, right, because this is not easy. Okay, so now we're going to start working on the hair. Uh, let's uh, bring in some of the uh, white pastel. The white pastel is such an important part, you know, uh, of this process. So since we're working on paper, we can use white pastel. We're not working on wood. Uh, if we were working on illustration board, we can do pastel. So uh, we're not working on metal, so we definitely can take advantage of this. And, you know, I'm taking off my airbrush glove because you don't want to get white pastel in the airbrush glove. So I'm going to start to pull out some of the uh, lights here. Just a little bit. Not crazy. Just push things along a little bit. And got a little doodad over there. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so here we are with the white pastel. And I'm just going to very lightly... Hit that highlight. Now, this uh, stump is a little bit flimsy at the point. Let's see if I can get one with a little more oomph to it. I think oomph is the technical term for that. Let's see. Now, it's not taking the pastel. Sometimes it doesn't. But that just means we need a different route to go. But there we go. I love that. That looked good. See if we can get that again. Oh, there we go. Okay, much better. So now we look at the uh, white of the eyes. This part is a little bit more intense. Getting a little more light there. And let's just tap this because the her lower eyelid, the little ledge there is is directly facing the light so we're going to see that a little bit more intense intense right and like right here we got a little bit of an intensity happening just like so and let's go ahead over to the other eye what we do one eye we have to do on the other one correct and so a little bit of an intensity over here what's really great you can always take your kneaded eraser and you can always tap it and just get rid of the amount of pastel that you want to get rid of. Now this is a very transformative part 
but make sure that we are aware that all that hard work of working out the values, working in a detail mixture, slowly building things up, that's where the real work, this is the payoff. So uh, make sure that we realize that the heavy lifting is in the early going. So, so far so good, you know, the last couple of weeks we've been having some difficulty with the um, live stream cutting out, but so far so good. Believe it or not, I think it had to do with that one thing where uh, it was like a, it would say my website and it would sort of be like a little ticker, ticker tape thing. Uh, I think that was causing the glitch. So I removed that. So far, so good. So uh, that might have been the problem. There we go. See that? Now you still don't want to be linear with this. You want to think. Uh, you want to think in terms of large shapes, even when you're doing something in small shapes. See that? Now. Some might say, why don't you go ahead and do those creases in the upper eyelid? Well, we got plenty of time for that. Right now, we have to get the uh, large light shapes here. And what that does, it not only gives a little more detail, but it also, what it does is it shows the structure and that's the main thing showing the structure and Nigel said that he wrote his first novel which unfortunately was about a plague and just finished it when the outbreak of coronavirus happened wow that is timely now uh, did you did you uh, look into getting that published because I think that would be real interest to a lot of people including myself now right here you see this, that's an imperfection of the paper, so I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to have to live with it. When it's blown up you see it, but when it's small you don't. And that is just an imperfection of the paper and uh, sometimes that happens. I didn't see it when I was actually uh, preparing the paper. And right here, remember uh, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, that's a really intense light because the these areas are facing the light really in directly and then right here the light is not as direct so we're going to kind of spread that out a little more you see that and kind of bring that over like so and let's darken this just a little bit and let's see how this looks uh, so as you can see things are starting to really shape up though just by adding this pastel here. And we're really starting not only to get her likeness a little bit more, but we're really starting to get the emotional aspects of this portrait. And like I said, this is something that you let happen. You don't strive for, not directly. You strive for it indirectly by sticking with the program. And then, then you go from there. And whatever you do on this side, we always have to make sure so remember, the light is coming from above, pretty much right in the center. So normally I would say one side is lighter than the other, but pretty much it's a symmetrical pose with the lighting. So we're going to be pretty symmetrical throughout here. So, But normally whatever side is the light side, everything on that side is going to be a little bit lighter than the dark side, the side that is in shadow. And uh, Nigel says, so far... Uh, he didn't think anybody would read it uh, if what were the coronavirus in full swing. Wow, very true. That's a good point. Uh, hey, Patty, have a great night. Thank you so much for hanging out. And uh, that's so cool. So I appreciate that. And Omar says it looks like a little vein on the eyelid. Somehow, like it belonged there. Yeah, it does in a sense, right? <laughs> I appreciate that, Omar with that, uh, you know, with the little uh, paper imperfection. And the thing is to always realize that you'll get to it. And so always relax. So let's say if I see an area that needs to be fixed, don't rush to it, come back to it, stay with where you are. And uh, 
And uh, so Nameless says he has trouble with that and he tries and uh, force things to happen. Yes, um, and that's a hard thing. So don't feel like you're alone. That happened to me for many years. And just recently, I was just, you know, it doesn't look like, or a lot of people will say, and I was like, well, a cookie doesn't taste like a cookie before you cook it. So uh, it just, you know, you just got to let that process go and then assess it. Now, if you're going way, you know, after you do the program, it doesn't look like a, then you reassess and see what happened, right? That's the important thing. But like if we're like, like right now, we're 70% uh, completion, we're really not in position to make a decision based at this, this, you know, this point. We can just check our measurements and everything, but we don't want to go and make big changes at this point. Hey, Wendy, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And Omar says he thinks I did it on purpose. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I should have I should have kept that to myself, right? That's funny. And so you see now with the white pastel, I can really start shaping things up here, which is really cool. And I can even start shaping up the lips a little bit better. Remember, this is a timism that the object is often described not by the object itself, but by the uh, adjacent object next to it. And that happens a lot. And here the lips is that the lips are being more described by the light around the lips than the lips itself, the lips themselves. So it, it happens a lot. And again, just make sure you're not getting too involved in whether or not it looks like her. Just, just, just work the process, everybody. That's all we have to do. Just work, work to, remember the process only works if we do. And that's what we always got to keep in mind, right? And, oh, Wendy, have a great night. Thank you so much. I didn't see the good night part. So I hope to see you soon. And, um, and thank you so much always. go and we got to work on the filtrum bring that filtrum up she has a wide filtrum and it doesn't really taper like many people's do it does and interesting you know the human body is just uh, so interesting you know our organism so many varieties you know oh Colette said she read I would too Nigel definitely um, so that's cool. And so, yeah, I would read it. I think, especially now, I think it's so timely. You know, something, see how prophetic your, your book was. Sometimes when a book is written, it's not, you know, it seems like a coincidence, but, you know, there's a reason for it. almost like an understanding of it, you know? And we're going to come back here, of course, but you can see we're sort of getting that light along the center line of the body, center line of the head. See how that comes down? That's going to give us a real sense. Hey, what's up, Joe? How you doing? Good to see you. That is fantastic. So, uh... So everyone, Joe, I, uh, I know you've been here before, but have you? Uh, I think I remember seeing you, Joe. And uh, so Nigel says, Tim, he couldn't agree with me more about taking photographs around the model because you never spend enough time studying before. Uh, the, uh, you can never stu spend enough time studying before in real life, but time is short. So true. So true. Uh, and it's all, you know, if we have an understanding of the forms that we're doing and what makes them round and everything, I know that will, that will show up in our art, right? I really feel it will. So I'm really enjoying doing the center line here. And you see how 
the center line comes right down to the lips and the teeth. So first I'm gonna do this, her beautiful chin here, so cute. See how now we're getting that center line? And that's where a lot of the emotion is too. Because that's where the eyes are and when we start bringing in attention to that, I think it really pays dividends and gives interest to where, you know, we the viewer start to feel a lot more comfortable that the center line has so much interest. We're not sort of moving around so much and that's, that's very good. And like I said, we'll come into detail more here. Let's, let's work on the little, her little teeth here. Now that's what makes this painting so difficult because it's a very, very tiny little, tiny, tiny, tiny little head. And uh, not to say that Jody has a tiny head. She doesn't. She has a very nice head. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, the reference is very small. There we go. So now you see she has that, her lower teeth are so important in this pose so we really can accentuate that and that is beneficial. See how things fall into place everybody? Falls into place. You don't want to struggle to get detail. You don't want to struggle to get a likeness. You want it to fall into place. Angra said, John Augusta Dominique Angra, we all know that's my hero. And John Augusta Dominique Angra said is that an artist considers the whole painting and works it together so it appears as though it was painted in one breath. And that's what we want. We want to create the ensemble. We don't want a series of features and hope they come together. We want to paint the whole thing together so it's one beautiful, flowing, elegant organism. Uh, so that works very well for me. Uh, that's been my philosophy since I was a kid. And um, 15 years old is when I started studying in art school. And, um, and I've always worked that way. Paint the ensemble. You know, you see a lot of those artists on YouTube where they sort of work like a, uh, like a printer. They sort of like work straight down. And I think that's... Uh, I think it looks good, but just because it looks good doesn't mean it tastes good. And I think it leaves something to be desired. There's less life in the painting. That's my feeling. Uh, you know, not so much when you're doing still lives and stuff like that. You know, you're doing a still life, it's different than painting a person. So I feel like when you're painting a person, it's a whole different ball game. And this is when you really want to work on the ensemble right so that's where that philosophy really is key and really what i feel that it's geared for it's geared for you know the artist who works from life uh not works from life but paints people and doggies and cats and you know stuff that's alive you know and oh so uh Nayla says what's the ensemble so the ensemble is uh the way i can uh like a woman, when she has, uh, you see women in New York or Paris, and they're, they, they're very fashionable, everything fits, you know, everything works. Her shoes, her stockings, her, her dress, her scarf, it's the ensemble, it all works together, right? And so that's what we want, we want that ensemble. We want everything to work together, pulling it together. So once we finish this, we can check out and see what's going on with her arm. And that's working the ensembles. Not sticking in one area, but working the whole thing together. There is not one, uh, you know, it, it all comes together. It's not everything is, is uh, as important, but everything is, needs to be coherent and have the right relativity to one another. And... Um, so Nayla says, have you seen the ones where they do two or three drawings at once with three pencils tied to a stick? Yeah, that's Hollywood. That's what my teacher Harvey Dinnerstein 
would say. That's that's a lot of Hollywood, and so I feel that way. I don't. I'm not Hollywood. I, you know, it's just all about you know working the working the program and and getting better classically. So you know that's what I'm about, and just sticking with the program. So remember, center line of the body, right? So now we need to do the forehead. So yeah, you know, weeks one to six, you know, we're doing a lot of stuff that looks like nothing is happening. But once we start doing this, you can see how she starts to appear, right? She starts to really show up. And that's what we're doing right now. And uh, so Colette says, awesome. So uh, I'm not sure what Colette is re responding to. I don't know if it was I said or uh, Nameless or Mr. Nigel with his book. And I think that's cool. I think Nigel's book is very awesome. I can't wait to read it if, I'm, if I have the uh, pleasure and privilege to read it one day. So as you see, now is a good time to make the forehead have have structure. The forehead is not a metal plate. It is something that, you know, has bones and skin texture, a little bit of muscle here and there, not much in the forehead, but still there is. So we definitely want to do that. So you see now, now if now she's starting to come together, right? I mean, not there yet. We got a little ways. But you see how I move around. When I see something over there, and I see how it relates, I can come down over here. Don't wait. If you see something, go ahead and work on it immediately. Don't wait. No time like the present. So it is a cool ADD approach, uh, you know, because you don't have to stick in one area. You're just moving around. And we're going to work on this. But you see... Just what we did today, right now, it's really a lot that we uh, were able to uh, sort of bring things together. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and let's work on her arm real fast because we're working on skin. So it's pretty easy to work on skin, right? So we're going to have a little bit of the light. Remember, the light is turning. I mean, the light's staying in one area, but as the forms turn, such as her arm, it's turning towards the light this way and away from the light. And we want to visualize her arm as it turns away from the light and goes completely in shadow. Of course, we only see up to here and then it turns under, but if we can visualize, visualize that and really kind of imagine it, then we could even get much more much more powerful. I think when we imagine it and our imagination will really, uh, really enhance what we're doing. I feel that's true. So imagine the turning of her, of her arm, right? Just don't say this is just a light area and a dark area, but imagine. And imagine taking a two-dimensional surface like this and bending it into three dimensions. Imagine that. And that, I think, is when we study science and geometry and mathematics and physics. I think those things, that, those are different uh, instances that I think could really help our work, make it more dynamic and just a little bit more special. I think it was Einstein who said that imagination is the most powerful thing we possess. Hey, Mike, how you doing? What's going on, my friend? So Mike says the eyebrows, what about them, my friend? Remember, they're not cooked yet, so I don't want you tasting the cookie until it's cooked, right? Because if you take that cookie out, it's gonna be all, all oily, the butter's not gonna be assimilated, and the sugar, and so, so, but uh, what about the eyebrows, sir? So we have Basically, at, we're still at the point of the eyebrows where we are in the large shape stage, and then we're going to come in and 
a little bit of paintbrush action, a little bit of white pastel for the negative shapes. It's going to really start to cook. Trust me, Mike. Trust me, trust me. You got to, you know the thing is, we have to trust the process. Either you're all in or you're not, right? So that's what I tell my students. Either we're in or we're not, right? You have to believe in the process. You have to just, because if you don't, what happens is you're like a ship on the ocean, right? That is in a storm and you're going this way and you're going that way. And you're like, oh my God, you know? But if you, if you stay the course and you know that the philosophy that you're following works, then you won't get nervous when something doesn't look right. So let's say, case in point, let's say the, um, uh, you know, the eyebrows don't look right or the eye is off, right? Don't worry about it. That's the whole philosophy. We're not going, ch -ch -ch -ch. hey, this is not me, you know? Do, 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 working and getting it totally finished. I would have had those eyebrows probably fixed in the first hour. And then I go here and go there and go all the way down. That's garbage. That's not the way to work. You want to make sure you paint the ensemble and you stick with the process. Thank you, Brad. Brad says that the process works. John, have a great night. I hope you, and thank you so much all the way from Wisconsin. I so appreciate you spending your Wednesday night with me, and it means a lot to me, my friend. And uh, stay warm out there. I know it's chilly, so that's important. So we're just going to stick with the process. And uh, so you see, now we're working on that arm. So we're, we're pretending that we can feel her arm when we're doing this. I want you to try that in your work. Pretend that you can feel her arm turning, right? Pretend that you can walk around her and the other side of the arm, what it would look like. What would the glove look on the other side of her arm? And you know what? As I'm doing this, I'm feeling and looking for things I wouldn't normally look for. Like right here where let's say the arm is the, uh, the glove is kind of pinching that bicep muscle and it's just making the the muscle just turn a little bit more towards that light, right? And I think that's really special. So, yeah, so that was a very important aha moment for me is uh, thinking about dimensions. And also there was like a weird thing about a fourth dimension and a, you know, a fifth dimension, dimensions that we can't see because we're stuck in a world of two dimensions. And think of Villanelle right now, right? Jodie Comer. This painting, she's stuck in two dimensions, right? You can't walk around her, but you can visualize that. And I think that's all next level stuff, you know? Um, I always say the next level stuff is not can you get more and more realistic. The next level stuff is can you, can you bring in more of your imagination, that's the coolness. That's the excitement. Mr. Mark, how you doing? Great to see you. Very, very cool. How's everything? So I'm so glad you're here. And Omar says, follow the program. Stick to the process. Don't, don't do anything Tim doesn't want you to do. <laughs> well, no, no. You guys got to follow your own dreams and your own... But, you know, I'm always happy for people tagging along. <laughs> always happy with people tagging along and learning from my process. That's cool. Bring in your own thing, too. You know, that's always great. Oh, oh, doing my best, Mark, and so glad to see you. Thank you for spending your Wednesday with me. I appreciate that more than you know. Uh, Wednesday is definitely my... How do you say? It's the highlight of my week. It's the butter to my bread. And uh, it's all because of you all just taking time out of your busy day just to say, hey, I'm going to hang out with this guy in New Jersey. And thank you for that. So now you see we, we started doing a little bit of her arm there and a little bit more of the light over here. Right? I think this is really working to our benefit. So now that arm looks really three-dimensional. She looks like she's coming out of the darkness, but you can feel like you can walk around her. 
and that's what we want. We have a lot to do with her hair and maybe describing the forms a little bit. So, we're going to introduce somebody here. Mr. Fonz and Porter, all of you know Fonz and Mr. Fonz and Porter really well. You can definitely hump day, yes. <laughs> so let's see with Fonz and Porter if we could work on just a little bit. Let me get my airbrush glove back. So with these little kneaded erasers, when they fall, be mindful to pick them up because you will step on it and it will dig into your rug and they'll make you very un unpopular with those who are living with you. So. Uh, I felt that I can't, oh, I'm just going to make sure I don't wheel around in the chair. Okay, so here's Fonz and Porter, and what we're going to do is we're going to start, get my airbrush glove, dun dun dun, and Nayla says, uh, it is hump day, didn't notice that, that is, it was still Monday, <laughs> well that's a good feeling, at least it's not Monday, right? <laughs> And uh, let's see. Yes, this message was Tim approved. <laughs> Boy, I'm so glad the uh, there's you know there's no elections coming up. Oh, that's so polarizing. So it's always nice when you know there's no elections coming up right now. So that's good. And I'm just gonna take Franz and Porter, and I'm just gonna see if I can work on. Just some of the the light areas here. Just a little bit. Just indications. Not going too crazy. Taking our time, right? We're going to take our time. We don't care how it tastes right now because we're not tasting it. Right now it's still cooking at 425 degrees for 35 minutes. Um, actually, when I make some amazing, amazing banana bread and pumpkin bread, it to leave its tree 65 for 50 minutes so if I take that sucker out at uh, 365 I take it out in 30 minutes people are gonna say Tim what's wrong with you why are you trying to feed us this poison right and it has the same ingredients and everything it's just the timings off uh, Tone says it's the day after yesterday and the day before tomorrow <laughs> yes and, and out of the tree Today's most important, isn't it? Right? It really is. Good point there, Mr. Tone. And we're just gonna... So, Tone, how's your airbrushing going? Tone's doing some really great stuff with sneakers, uh, athletic shoes. Uh, definitely check it out. Really great. You have an Instagram, don't you, uh, Mr. Tone? What is your Instagram? So people can go there and they could subscribe and look at your great work and how would they do that my friend and you see right now we have a little bit of hair little hairs coming out just like so because there's more volume here and these little hairs will help describe that extra volume Just like right here. Cute little hairs that, remember, it's not like spaghetti. You don't want to do the hairs and have them all come out long. If you look at hair, you'll see that it breaks up. It, you know, it doesn't go all the way long like spaghetti. It'll come here. You'll see it connect over here, disconnect over here. Different sizes, different thicknesses. So always be mindful of that. So you see how she's starting to come together? She's starting to come out a little bit. Uh, oh, it's the same as your subscribed. Okay, cool. So it's Tonism Airbrushing. Is that correct, Tone? And Nameless, what is your Instagram? Because I know you have an Instagram, sir. So what I want everyone to do, I want everyone to share their artwork and you know get encouragement so everyone who's here let's do this i want everyone to go ahead and put in their instagram id 
So my Instagram ID is just painted glyphs. So everyone do that and then we can look back and we can go ahead and subscribe to everyone. Oh, Steve loves the Stefans and Porter. It is like it is like the best thing since sliced bread, isn't it, Steve? I agree. It is just makes there's nothing like it on the market because this thing is for it's for believe it or not, this is made for tailors. It's not an art supply. It's basically chalk, but it works perfectly with this technique, with this paper. It just really, really works well. And so, as you see, things are starting to ramp up. I love it. I love things when they ramp up. So with Pons and Porter, I could work on her teeth a little bit. A beautiful smile. go such a cutie there so things are starting to come together right a little bit a little bit now I'm going to come back to her eyes and eyebrows later and you can see how I was overzealous over here dun 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 so let's go ahead and calm that now I want to be very gentle just because it's an aggressive eraser doesn't have to doesn't mean you have to be aggressive with it right so you can be very gentle with an aggressive eraser you can just tap it and bring that right back to where it needs to be let's take our light mixture here just calm that down if anything you're doing and it's totally out of whack like that you just have to make sure that you bring it back hey there mr john Payne. good to see you that's so cool and let's see so mr john Payne says zero three m-a-c-e so i'm not sure what that means uh and nigel says i think the reality of the coronavirus is more horrendous than the storyline wow that's pretty interesting oh zero three m-a-c-e that's your that's your instagram right so thanks for that okay now i'm now I'm back on board here. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mr. Phil is, Philip is 03MACE. I'll make a note of that. Let's see. Uh, nameless user 8. Uh, okay, nameless user 8. And I think I have your, your but I'm going to reiterate it and make sure. Nameless user with one S, right? Nameless user 8 no spaces and then uh, Brad is his is just Brad Mummery yes let's all let's everyone all um, go ahead and support each other and really help us you know when new artwork comes out you know we just need to do that with each other uh, total pain enterprises We're all in this together, you know? Uh, we all are. We're in this together. And uh, that's the kind of community I want to build, right? I want to build that up and build up a strong community. Okay, so where were we? Okay, so we were working on the hair a little bit, right? Oh, so right now I do have... Uh, I can get that airbrush to you within a week or so. Uh, you know, with testing it out, I do have seven in stock. So seven airbrushes in stock. So a really fast turnaround time. So that's cool. And so if you have any questions, you let me know. And Nameless says, Tim, we are following each other. Perfect. Okay, that's so cool. And so I'm glad to hear that. And we got Brad's Instagram, which is cool. And, uh, and honey, what is your Instagram? I know we're friends on, uh, we're friends, uh, honey, on, on Instagram. But for others, what is it? And the same thing for, for you, Mr. Steve Leahy. Uh, oh, oh, at the moment, I could have them to you really quickly. So if it's, uh, you know, if you need it fast, 
I definitely can can uh, get that going for you. If you have a special case, you know, everyone might need it quickly for a project, I definitely can get it for you uh, in a much quicker, you know, turnaround if that's your needs. I don't mind helping people out like that, especially with the holidays. So as you can see, her hair is starting to come together. I mean, we're just doing the basics right now. And so when you're doing hair, you want to make sure you get the direction. The direction is really key. Uh, so get that direction correct and you will get the flow. Miss the direction and you'll just miss the mark. So get that direction. See how it's starting to come together little by little. No rush. Get that direction and everything's gonna come together. Uh, oh, Air Todd. Oh, okay, Air Todd, we'll put that there. So don't forget to go ahead and, uh, you know, subscribe or, or, or follow uh, Mr. Air Todd as well. And okay, so yes, Mark, so that's uh, paintingglyphs at gmail.com and we'll, we'll work on uh, getting that for you. So the good thing is I do have seven in stock and I just finished two, they're going out. So still seven in stock. And Colette says she's her. Oh. <laughs> so just Colette, Marie, is that how it is? So that's neat. Uh, so that's good. So what time we got? We got 11.02 so far. It's been a good day. I'm so happy that, you know, it didn't cut off, but I really think it had to do with that text I had. You know, live streaming, there's only like four or five live streaming programs that you could use. Live streaming is at its infancy. If you are an influencer, uh, like Steve Leahy, uh, Total Pain, John, Brad, uh, I really recommend getting into live stream. That's the uh, frontier right now. And that's where you're going to get the opportunities. You know, uh, that is so important. So definitely look into live streaming if you, if you want to, you know, start to have a, a real influence in the uh, social media. Uh, I know Mr. Uh, Leahy does a really good live stream both on Facebook and Instagram. So he's on board. You definitely can see that. Uh, so Todd says it's a request. So you have to request Mr. Todd. Okay, fair enough. We'll make that happen. I know you'll say yes when we ask to be uh, on your live stream, I hope, or ask to be on your channel. <laughs> and so, you know, we have some real nice detail to do, which is nice. And so now we're going to go back to the white pastel and we're going to start working on the gloves. Dun, dun, dun. So what's coming soon, uh, Mr. Tone? Oh, uh, are you a new Instagram or a new website? That's cool. I just finished my website, which is inkflingers.com. Surprise, right? And Nameless Subscriber says, don't forget to follow Air to Be Different and Leahy Airbrush. They're usually on here too, but don't always stay long. Definitely. Oh, Leahy Airbrush. Great, great. And yeah, always, always willing to help out fellow artists that are as cool as those guys and all of you. So it's always, always uh, a pleasure. So now we're going to work on the gloves, huh? Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Uh, oh, live streaming, yes. Live streaming uh, has a lot to do with uh, your computer and your internet. And there's a lot of little technical things uh, when you do Facebook. So that's why a lot of it isn't happening as much because it's in its infancy. And being in its infancy, it's really difficult to do them. Kent is the coolest, isn't he? Uh, Kent's fantastic. You know, he played uh, college basketball, and I think his team was like a national championship or something like that. 
I think it was in, uh, in, uh, I think class, uh, class double A or something like that, which is really cool. So that's pretty exciting. So he was an athlete. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start coming in with the lights of her glove. We're going to start with each finger and we're going to paint the ensemble. We're not going to get too involved into the little, little pieces here. We're just going to start slowly but surely and we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time, darn it, you know? <laughs> Oh, you have better Wi-Fi in the garage. Oh, cool. And Mark says, glad to see, uh, glad you set it up with HTTPS uh, and the certificate. Oh, definitely. I have um, SiteGround, and it comes with the, with the certificate and everything. So, uh, and that's on inkflingers.com, you know. Uh, I'm taking down Painted Glyphs pretty soon. So, Painted Glyphs is going to be no more in the next couple of days. Uh, I'm going to redo painted glyphs as just my pastels and keep ink flingers separately. So, uh, so ink flingers will be, I mean, ink flingers is up. That's the new website. And then uh, painted glyphs is going to be closed down for a little bit for construction. So right here we have this. We'll just bring this over. Just like so. Oh, so so Nameless says yes. He is Stephen. He's confused him uh, for for somebody with uh, sometimes his T-shirt game. Oh yes. So uh, yes, uh, Mister. Uh, yeah, he's fantastic, uh, Mr. Kent. His t-shirt game is really good. The best out there, I feel, when it comes to t-shirts. But a fine artist in his own right. He did this portrait of Pink, and it was on the cover of Airbrush Magazine, Airbrush Action Magazine, Out of This World. And that was one of my first favorite airbrush paintings. So you can see now is the fun part of the gloves, right? Starting to bring these gloves together. We're doing the lights. We have the mid-tone set up. So then comes the darks. Wow, it's really going to start coming together. And that makes me happy. Going to get the feeling like leather, right? And, um, and the nameless subscriber says, uh, Anton, you're lucky. It's always in the garage and the Wi-Fi is not good. And, and Mark says, you can go and set up the DNS pretty easily so it moves traffic that it goes to the old site to the new site. Yes, that's a great idea. Sort of have a forwarding, right? So Painted Glyphs, great idea, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mark. I'm going to definitely do that. Hey, your last name's not went for nothing, right? So <laughs> you know about this stuff. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to contact SiteGround tomorrow, and I'm going to have uh, Yahoo uh, release Painted Glyphs, so I can go ahead and put that on my web hosting, so that's going to be good. So that's something I have to do tomorrow along with everything, so, you know, I have to put that on the docket, so to speak. So here we are, just working on her, her glove there and just very slowly no rush and you can see here how you know this knuckle of her pinky sort of comes out right here and sort of comes over here so we're just we're really getting that down and we can also see where we might have missed the mark a little bit and i did so right here this is much lighter and then this area comes here, this comes down.
So I love what I was talking about. Um, oh, great. So I'm definitely going to uh, look you up there. Uh, unemployed Network Administrator. Wow. Would you mind if I asked you some questions now and then, my friend? Because I would love to, uh, you know, uh, hear some of, get some feedback from you. So I appreciate that. Ken Lynn, he did Michael Jordan on some Air Force Ones with a BCS. Oh, very cool, very cool. Uh, the name, yes, uh, the Eclipse BCS. I don't like that airbrush, just personal thing. I don't like bottom feet airbrushes. Well, they're not for my kind of artwork, right? So just not a big fan. They're not geared for me. So of course they're not going to be ones that I like. Not to say it's not a great airbrush. It's just outside of my needs. That's all. Sometimes my opinion is good. Sometimes you got to take it with a grain of salt. Like anybody, right? Sometimes more so with me. <laughs> And let's go ahead and work on it here. Shape this light here a little bit. Comes down. This comes in. There's more dark over here. Bring this over. Let's see if we can use the eraser to get a little better. Oh, oh, so Mark loves that brush. Cool, cool. Yeah, so you probably do a lot larger work is that so you do a lot of t-shirts mark is that it uh because i can understand you know for certain things that's like the perfect airbrush right so you always we always have to take advice from those who use the airbrush and and use it for what it's supposed to be so that's always good to remember that i have to remember that There's some nice darks over here. Oh, so that made it more impressive because of the control he had with that bottom feed. Well said there, Tone. I appreciate that. And Tone, do you charge a flat rate for shoes or it depends on the project? Those Boondock Saints have some strong colors. Cool. So I have to check on the Boondock Saints one. Are they on Instagram? Uh, tone so we can look at that later perhaps check out your expertise oh look at that the color changed a little bit that was interesting did you guys see how the color shifted a little bit that's weird I wonder what caused that I don't know but I'm going to go ahead and lower the uh, I'm going to go ahead and change the saturation to bring that down to black there we go okay that looks better weird how that does like i said live streaming is the frontier right now uh most definitely it is the frontier so we have to it's great to be on the ground floor of live streaming but realize that you're going to see weird technical issues uh, i have them a lot less than a lot of people because like I said, I've been doing live streams every week for four and a half years. So think about that. You know what it is also? I have the uh, light above on and that has uh, incandescent bulbs. So I'm gonna shut that off because it's not really important. And that really brings the colors down. So that was definitely that problem. A little bit of a uh, a raspberry lemonade break right now we're at 11 14. oh boy that's good five calories can't go wrong five calories tastes a heck of a lot better than water so it's a win-win okay so we're going to coming over here this is a light area that's very low key. Keep that little low key over there. So I have the light mixture first and I'm just going to work on some of these creases in here. Right? We'll get there, you know, we just, we don't want it to look like the gloves. That's not our point. We're just sticking with the program, getting some of the large shapes, right? Working with the airbrush, working with the 
um, working with the white pastel, working with the eraser, being tenacious, right? Mark, thank you so much. Thank you, Mark, for this super chat. I really appreciate it. Um, just fantastic of the super chats today. I mean, I think it's so great, Mr. Leahy and Paul and Mark. I really, really appreciate that. That means so much. It tells me I'm doing the right thing or going in the right direction. It's very encouraging for me. And uh, just love doing this. I love seeing you all on on Friday, on Wednesdays. I mean, I look forward to it all week. This is kind of like my Friday. You know, like Friday has that really good feeling like, hey, it's Friday, let's have some junk food, watch some good TV and hang out, don't think about work. And that's what this is. Although I am airbrushing, it's just different than when I'm just airbrushing normally at the studio. This is just hanging out with cool people, like-minded, hearing about your artwork and, and everything like that. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, so Nameless says, Mark, somebody lied to him. They told him uh, only had $4.99 and $9.99, etc. So what does that mean? $4.99? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Is that something that Tone is selling or something? So that's cool. So uh, Nameless says graffiti style. And, oh, Tone says he has a price to start at and goes up. So maybe that's something I'm missing. So I'm not sure. But um, Tone does some really great work. So really happy to see his uh, work on Instagram and see it on, on YouTube. Not so much, but you're. I know you... Uh, did YouTube in the past and I know you're gonna do it again and also I love seeing your work on on Facebook See how it's starting her gloves are starting to look like gloves Now I got to be careful right because I'm reiterating the fold in the gloves So I don't want to be putting white pastel or erasing because it's still very wet We don't want that to happen so that creates a disaster. So always remember that with the gloves, you have to be very, like with, when working, you never want to do anything else when it's wet. You just want to let it dry and then go, go to town afterwards, okay? So here we are with the light mixture, but I'm thinking we're gonna go ahead with the, uh, media mixture remember the two airbrush method bam the two airbrush method keeps us from being lazy and that's always good i always need to be kept from being lazy you know sometimes it's good to find the easiest the point of least resistance but sometimes it hurts the art so we want to be careful that we are not hurting the art by doing the, the least resistance thing So you see that hand is starting to look like a glove, yes. And when we come in with that that light value, it's gonna really come together, just like her face. And you see, now I think she's starting to come out of the darkness. I'm really starting to feel that she's having some more refinement. And we'll get there, you know. We're gonna we're just going. I guess that's the theme for today, right? Sticking with the program, being all in in an approach and continue doing that and you're gonna be okay but you know getting nervous or thinking an area oh i gotta fix it you're breaking you're breaking the program it's like okay are there any football fans out there you know over the weekend we had all those great football games college football's fantastic right so if a team's a running game a running team right that's their thing their attack they have a great running back a wonderful offensive line and let's say they fall behind they fall behind let's say 21 to nothing in this first quarter and then they start passing the ball well they're definitely not going to win because they're going outside their game plan 
So just file it again. Hey, Paul, thank you so much. That's the second one. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Paul. I That means so much to me. So a $9.99 one. And uh, this is great. I had four Super Chats today. And that is so wild. And I think that's the coolest thing. Uh, there he goes again, save a penny. Uh, but look at that, $9.99. That's fantastic. So just amazing Super Chats today. Um, uh, so I am so stoked about that. And, and that just, it's like, it's like, it's better than a cherry on top. It's more like, you know, like extra fries or, you know, something like that, you know, or an extra entree. That's what that is. You know, I'm having fun doing this already. And then getting a super chat is just like out of this world, right? Thank you so much, Paul. So yeah, we don't want to be like that football team that goes outside of their game plan and starts becoming a, a passing team when they're much better at a running team, you know? So with that thinking, we have to make sure that even though things might look a little south for us, hey, <laughs> Mark, thank you so much. That's fantastic. With the fist bumps. All right. Wow. Five, five super chats today, everyone. Five. I really think that's the record. So I just thank Steve and Mark and, and Paul um, and everyone who, who did the super chats. So we have Mark. And Mark, that's your second one. Thank you so much. So Paul and Mark both did two. And we have Steve Leahy. And that was just amazing. And we have, uh, you know, so that's cool. Oh, my God. This is six. That never happened before. Six Super Chats. Thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate that. Brad is a student of mine for over two years. Actually, going to be two years. That Brad, <laughs> make that seven. <laughs> so thank you, Brad. Thank you, Mark. Oh my God, it's like a, it, it's it's like Christmas in December first. This is amazing. You did break the record, seven. I count seven super chats out of this world. Just amazing. Uh, and uh, and and Aunt Todd says Tim. Just not buying coffee tomorrow. He's buying the coffee shop. <laughs> and Paul says he's got to go get some food now. Oh, man. That is so cool. So thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. So it's 1123. I always give you two hours, especially when we don't go down. This has been an amazing live stream. You know, the Super Chats are just out of this world. I'm just so happy and thankful and oh thank you steve steve says it's another great feed thank you so much we were in the 20s the whole night you know 22 uh the whole night not going down as far as people in the group and um that's just so cool you know next week's going to be great because next week what we're going to do is we're going to go in and start working on this leather and i think everyone's going to really get a lot from that is uh you know with the leather and i did it once with uh dua lipa and it worked out really well so next week is gonna fan be fantastic thank you colette and uh whoa eight eight do i count eight eight super chats raul thank you so much see <laughs> nine Nine Super Chats, Sam and Raul, wow, I am, I'm rarely speechless, you know, I'm always blah, 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 that's me, right? But tonight, I am totally speechless, you, I just, I just feel amazing, and I just, I just feel, um, I don't know, just so thankful for everybody, and, um, uh, I'm telling you, it's just a great feeling, you know, working and living by myself and everything. This, these Wednesday nights are just so fantastic. Um, 
So I really love it. Got to keep me here two hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, man, I wish I could stay, but uh, my workload is so like, oh, my God, Tim, I got so much to do. But, oh, my God, nine super chat. Unbelievable. I, I only seen that in the past on, like, these large channels. I've never seen, oh, I love you too, Raul. Thank you. Uh, you guys mean and girls mean so much to me and um, and that's that's just how it is that's just how I feel you know um, and Paul says he noticed that all you airbrushes are pretty darn cool airbrushes are great what a great uh, community right mr. Mark Webb have a good great night and thank you so much for all the encouragement and the super chat and and Sam and Raul and Brad and and um, Steve, um, just you know, just amazing. You guys are just out of this world, Paul. I mean, it just—it's a lot of fun when something like happens like that so organically. And what a special, special night. So next week is going to be the. It's going to be my birthday live stream. So I want to celebrate my birthday with everybody. And uh, so so I may have some like birthday decorations behind here. I'm going to be 39 years old like uh, like Mr. Jack Benny. So I think I, I got to 38 and I'm going to stay at 39 for like quite a while. <laughs> And let's see, Nameless Subscriber says that's almost half the viewers. Not a bad turnaround. Thank you. That is amazing. Yes. This is an amazing day. That's for sure. And uh, Nameless says, yes, it is Mark. And uh, Steve Leahy says, cake. And yes, it is all. I'm 39. That's it, you know. Uh, just, just like Jack Benny. So how many people out there know who Jack Benny is, you know? Uh, he was great. I never understood the whole 39 thing when I was very young, but as I get older, I understand how beautiful 39 sounds. <laughs> so when we get older, it's like, yeah, no, uh, I'm 39. And when a woman asks me well, how old I am, and I say, uh, could you pass the salt? <laughs> you know, I changed the subject. How about those jets? Right? Uh, definitely. Uh, and Nameless says, uh, everyone here talks to everyone. A lot of people here have their own careers in airbrush. So true. Total Pain says, don't forget to hit the like button, everybody. Uh, Sam says, Tim, you need to do some painting giveaways like Steve does. Yeah, you know, that's a good idea. Because Steve does some really incredible uh, ones. I think that would be a good idea to do that. I just have to make sure, Sam, I get everyone what they want free so I can start that with a clean conscience. Uh, so that's really cool. Omas is 24, young man. <laughs> and you're sticking to that story, right? That's it, right? Just stick to 24 and don't ask any questions. That's what I say. When the ladies ask me how old I am, I say 39. I go like this, 39. You know, how old are you, Tim? And then they go, and they say, oh, uh, how old? And I say, yes, that's right. And then I change the subject. So that's always a good way to do it. <laughs> a 543 painting. Oh, well, the 543, that is specialized Mr. Steve. He does that so well, I could never compete with that. I know when I'm licked, you know. Uh, he does what he does just so amazing. I mean, he does aircraft carriers and and cars and people he's just amazing so really cool uh tim that would be nice i'd be happy owning just one of your sketches oh thank you i appreciate that nameless that's very nice maybe a small airbrush painting that i'll make special for the group and give that away might be a good thing right that would be number 810 <laughs> 8 by 10 right because uh, I know 543 has something to do with dimensions. Is that right, Mr. Leahy? So, we had, um, I believe, nine super chats. Yes, 
nine super chats, and uh, that's this will always go. This will always go as the record super chats, and just a great December first. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Definitely a milestone in my live stream. So next week I want you to come back because we are going to work on those gloves and it's going to, yes, uh, yeah, for four by three per five per week. Holy Toledo. See, it, I can't beat him. So Steve is doing some great things. He's a five, four, three king. I'll sit back and maybe give a, maybe an eight by 10 or something and give that out. That's a great idea though. So Mr. Todd, everybody, thank you so much. And I just want to say thank you for hanging out with me. Next week is going to be Tim's 39th. That's what it is. Tim's 39th birthday spectacular. So please come to my birthday spectacular next week. That would be so much fun. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, you all are just so amazing. And I just, uh, you, you all are close to my heart. And I want you to know that. And we had a live stream with no interruptions, no glitching out, nothing like that. So thank you so much for your patience. Everyone have an amazing week. And uh, send me an email. Talk to me during the week. I'd love to hear from you. Bye, guys.